All aboard! We're going off the rails. Welcome to our fun little Disney show that's all about Disney tangent. I am your conductor, Craig, today on our uh, very empty train, our very empty railroad that contains only me and then also uh, the wonderful Jackie Gailey. Oh, thank you. Hi, guys. Yeah. So unfortunately, Denny is still off and Rhino is traveling right now and thought about uh, bringing in some some replacements as we've done the past couple weeks, but then ultimately decided we're going to make this a little bit more of a personal show and talk about uh, what we do with the Diz and the fact that we literally get to cover Disney for a living as well as going to Disney parks for a living, too. It's it's pretty cool, and it's the life. Uh, but there's not always it's not always rainbows and happiness and sunshine and and merriment. We'll get to that in just a second, though. Before we do, I do need to remind you that this show is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like us and our content, and you want to support us, please book your next vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. And of course, it costs you no extra money, and you get that world class service and support from the agents at Dreams Unlimited Travel. So get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. And also, please take a second to hit the thumbs up on this YouTube video if you're watching through YouTube, that is, and make sure you. You leave lots of comments, questions, video suggestions in the uh, comment section below, and then also subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening, make sure you are subscribed to wherever you're listening to Off the Rails. You're probably listening to the best and worst feed right now. Maybe not forever, though. Ooh, we'll see what's to come with that. And then if you're watching, watching, blah, listening through Apple Podcasts specifically, please go ahead and give us a five-star rating and review. It makes sure that uh, we get pushed out to more people because Apple's going to say, hey, people like watching you guys or watching. Once again, I'm doing it. We're already going off the rails here right now. It's like we like people clearly like listening to you. We'll we'll make sure that more people get to listen to you. So go ahead and do all those things. And now maybe we can get to this week's show. I have no idea. I'm clearly already just losing it, but we're gonna have a lot of fun. So I I guess once again to recap what we're going to talk about, even though I just told you, a lot of people obviously know what we do for a living. If you're watching this on YouTube, you probably have been following along with us at least for a little bit or listening to us. You know, you, you know that we literally we work for a website and travel agency that just covers Disney and Universal. And with Disney, it's Walt Disney World, Disney Cruise Line, uh, Disneyland, Adventures by Disney all, all of that. And uh, that's literally our lives. And there are a lot of people who are very fortunate to to do this for a living, not just with our company, but other people who have their own websites and agencies and and such like that. They also get to live the dream in a, uh, in a, in a sort of way, just like we do. But uh, we don't really ever take a lot of time to, to go into who we are and recap who we are and then what we actually do and what it's like. And I think it's uh, it's important to do it now. And as Rhino comes back on the show and Denny comes back on the show, we'll make sure they get a chance to share their stories too and, you know, kind of what their days are like, as well as, as uh, you know, we'll bring in other, other members of the team. We can bring in Corey one day and we can bring in Teresa maybe down the line. I don't know. It's We'll see. We'll see where we go with it. But uh, I am going to start with actually i'm gonna start with jackie because i've now just been talking way too long straight so before we talk about what you actually do jackie tell us what led you to get here even in the first place what were you doing before you got to the the world of the diz and you know obviously you can throw in disney into that mix as well too but just what what led you down this path to here well, it's so funny how how everything kind of works out sometimes and you just sort of wonder sometimes when certain things happen, you're not really sure why it happened, but then you can kind of look back and see why the puzzle pieces all just sort of fit in. Mm -hmm. So um, I used to be a center director for a pretty huge childcare company 
and I had long days. They were oftentimes really stressful. So every moment that I wasn't at work, I was planning my next Disney vacation always. That was like my hobby. So um, fast forward a few years and we ended up in Savannah where I started working behind the scenes on a website that focused mainly on parenting and every once in a while we would throw in some pixie dust with, uh, you know, Disney vacations and planning trips and what's going on at Disney. So, um, and then I helped a friend of mine with her website. I started kind of doing that a little bit. And, you know, it's funny because when you do things online, the more you do it, the more you learn it and you sort of have this, it's it's fun to always be reaching out to learn more things and how do I make this happen and how do I make that happen? And so, um, and, and then it got to the point where social media was such a big deal and everybody wanted to hear all your stories. And so you would write this big, long Facebook post and you would have these online conversations and interactions. And then people started doing that for a living and it was like, Oh, Hey, so you know, maybe I could do that. And uh, it was just kind of a word of a word of mouth thing that that brought me into the Diz. So a friend of mine who I had been friends with for years and years worked for the Diz and mentioned my name at some point when there was a position being talked about. And here I am. Yeah. So, of course, I'm in a different position now than I was when I originally started. Yes. Yeah, we'll we'll so. get into that. And <laughs> no, we don't have to get into that. We could, <laughs> we could dig into that. That would be a tangent for you. That'd be a tangent I, for it, sure. It's going to end up coming up, I'm sure, in a way, what you did before when you first got here. But, uh, you know, obviously to be in with the Diz, just like me, it had to, you had to have a passion for Disney first. So you've shared stories in the past on Off the Rails and other shows about, you know, your trips to Disneyland when you lived in Seattle and, and also, uh, you know, other stories about about growing up and and even then traveling across country to do uh, do big family vacations. But do you want to take us through that? Like where when did when did you catch the Disney bug originally? Where did it all start and when did it then go into the parks and, and just transform into a bigger thing? OK, so this is really fun to me and I love I love to share this. So um, I have two kids. They're pretty grown up now. Um, but our first family trip to Disneyland, my uh, my youngest, my daughter was two and my oldest, my son was six and we went and we um, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't really plan ahead for anything. We didn't know about dining reservations. We we basically just booked a trip to Disneyland and we went. And um, we got there in the afternoon. And so then we started talking to people at the hotel and we heard that maybe we should have a reservation for breakfast. So we decided that we would make breakfast reservations every morning at the restaurant that is now Steakhouse 55. But back then it was called Granville's. Yeah. And, you know, we thought, well, we'll do a character breakfast one morning for the for the week that we're here. But mostly it was going to be Granville's. Well, there was a server there. Her name was Ashley. And she took care of us on that first morning. And I will never I'm she actually lives in Florida now and we're friends and she is at Disney World. She um she was on the opening team for um Oh, why am I drawing a blank? Tiffins. Oh, Sorry. wow. Animal yeah. Kingdom. Yeah. So she was on the opening team for that restaurant. And um, she she was so excited that it was our first time at Disneyland. The kids were so animated. And she, I could see the sparkle in her eyes at how excited she was that we were there. Genuinely. Mm -hmm. And she, she like squatted down and she had her arms on the table like this. And she told us so many things 
and just details of things that she recommended that we do. And she, um, it just so happens that the Monsters, Inc. attraction, she had heard that they might be doing soft openings on that attraction. So one of the things that she told us was to maybe wander back there to see if by chance anybody grabbed a hold of us and said, hey, come on over and ride this, which they did. <laughs> And I, so the magic in your kid's eyes, when something like that happens, it just makes you as kind of a young parent, you believe in magic right then and there. There's no question that you are a believer in magic. And um, I couldn't believe that she got to go to work and do this and have that sparkle in her eye that was so genuine. And she was so happy to just give us that information. And that was the moment that I was all in it, just all in it. Yeah. And then you, you bought DVC immediately afterwards and really got into that craziness. Not immediately. It was quite a few years actually, because I had to really work on my family. <laughs> <laughs> that took me a lot of years. Yeah. It was, let's see, we bought DVC in 2011. So my youngest was 10. It took me eight years. That's actually not that bad, though. That's not bad. I mean, yeah. it's... Well, it felt like eternity. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine. I mean, it's... I, I'm I'm still not DVC. I will always hold out on DVC. I will never go down that rabbit hole. It's just yeah. not for me. But I, that's... Well, Go ahead. The thing that tipped us over finally was so when we used to stay at the Disneyland Hotel, we would get a, the, a big room on the corner and it had connecting rooms mm -hmm. and it was huge and it was big enough for six. Let's see, four, five, six. There were six of us, seven when my brother came and then eight when he got married. So there were eight of us, the biggest party at Disneyland. And we loved being able to stay all together. And the thing that made us do DVC was back in 2008, we ventured over to Disney World and we booked our vacation and we had no idea where to stay, but we picked old Key West because I liked the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I liked the look of it. I mean, it's gray and rainy and pretty chilly in Seattle. So when I saw pictures of old Key West, I was like, that's the place. We got to stay there. And uh, that price on that, just the accommodations were over 10K. And, you know, my parents took care of that. And that was when the heavy duty convincing started happening because – I knew that I couldn't, once I visited Walt Disney World, I knew that we had to go again. I knew yeah. that there was no way that we could just stay at Disneyland. I knew that we had to come across the country and do Disneyland again and again, because there were too many things that we wanted to do. And I'm like, you know, we're going to have to pay for our own family vacations here. My parents aren't going to just take care of this every time. So we got to figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> so you had never been to Walt Disney World before that, not growing up or anything? Nope, that's right. 2008 was my first wow. time. And same same goes with Disneyland before you took your kids? You had never gone there either? I had gone to Disneyland okay. as a kid once. I was actually twice. I was I was eight the first time. My grandma took me there just for an afternoon. And then I was 14 the next time we just went for a day and my brother was a baby. And it's so funny because I remember telling my mom, oh, you can go on pirates and hold the baby. It's fine. There's no it's a roller coaster. It's just a boat ride. So I'll never forget how mad she was at me when we <laughs> when we went down the second hill. I was in a lot of trouble. Jackie. I brother <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i get it though i get it it's uh, people still do it today i mean it's, it's, yeah. it's all good I mean, it's all good i was just like 
that didn't count as a, I, I don't know why. I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't, I forgot about that part. Anyway. That's, that's <laughs> hilarious though. Yeah. And yeah. And then it's just ramped up for you ever since. It really has. I mean, I just, there's something that I feel every time, every time I'm, I'm there. And now that my kids are big, I like, we all like to watch little kids. Mm -hmm. So we all like to see little kids twirling, you know, jumping up and down, excited to see a character, just whatever. We just, it's, it's so fun to, you know, if you're having a bad day or if you're just hot and exhausted as happens here in Florida, um, you know, you just find a little kid and, and watch them for a minute and, it cheers you right up. I mean, they're, it's just so cute to see them having so much fun. And then you remember all of these things that you used to do with your kids and how magical it was. And it's like, okay, okay, I'm good. (laughs) Jackie, you're right and wrong. Disney is not for fun. Uh, It's no fun should be had at all, but you're you're close. I'm glad you (laughs) have fun at least. Yeah. It's, (laughs) I, it's wild to me just hearing your story and and recapping it over again, because mine is like so incredibly different. Obviously we're of different generations, even though this job has aged me terribly. And, uh, I feel like I am 20 years, 30 years older than I I was when I started, but I just, I, I was one of those kids that was definitely raised by TV and I'm not saying my parents were bad for doing that. Uh, it's just, it's what I was interested in as well too. So I, I've talked about this from time to time. I was I was raised on the Disney sing along song cassettes and Disney movies and and Disney, but not even just that Nickelodeon and and other cartoons as well. It wasn't just solely solely on the the Disney line. And then I I you know I went on one trip into the parks as an infant. Don't remember it, but then my parents took us. I think it was like 92, 94, 96 was our first vacations. And I was like five, seven and nine. So I was right in that that sweet spot and age range to to visit Walt Disney World. And those were the trips that like left a very, very, very big impact on me for for many obvious reasons. And and I got the bug and it then continued to translate outside of of even the parks. And so when it hit after our 96 trip, right around that time period, Disney released a CD-ROM game that was Walt Disney World Explorer, where you could basically, it might have been closer to 98 when that was released, but basically, you know, you could just feel like you were living in Disney parks while you were sitting at home on your computer. And it was like nothing but like a fun little infographic thing. You could click around to all the lands of Magic Kingdom and you would click on an attraction and there'd be some highlights. Sometimes there'd be like a little fun video that would pop up that would show highlights of it. And and this thing, I was obsessed with it because after that 96 trip, we didn't go again until... Uh, 2000. We had one Disneyland trip in 99 in between my first time to Disneyland, but we we just we we didn't have anything else in between. My parents were also like, we need to also do like beach trips. We need to do other things besides just Disney. You need to actually see more of the world, something I wish they would have pushed me more into when I was growing up, as I said last week on this show, but I loved Walt Disney World Explorer. I would be constantly on it. It played all the music as well, too. So like it just it it was my life. And then that and then the Internet came around and the Internet became a thing, obviously, around 95, 96, when I really started getting on it and having AOL around that time period. And, you know, 97 at that mark, that's when I started learning about all these cool websites like, well, in this case, obviously the one that I work for now, the Diz, and there's other ones too. Um, uh, All Ears back when uh, Deb was running All Ears way back in the day and Intercot as well. I would just be on these websites 
constantly, even though it was information I knew. I had all the guidebooks, everything. I would buy burn bombs every year, even when we weren't going. I, I yeah. had all of it, but it was like I would just then get on the website. And I remember, I, I don't remember if the Diz did it first or if it was Intercot or another site, but I remember then the time point where you could start uploading little um little uh video files onto the computer and they were only like the graphics quality would be like you know now we're up to 1080 is kind of like your, your tv standard and 4k and beyond but back then it was like the resolution was like 140 and it would be this little <laughs> tiny blurry box and you could watch ride videos that they would upload to their sites and put it on there and then that was like that was the next level. So then when we finally went back in 2000, then that's when I grabbed our video camera. And now I'm like, OK, I'm going to start filming around and and I'm going to film rides that that we're going on. And I, I mean, right. that's that's not where my story like took off of what I do with work now. It was just odd that like that's what I started doing back then. And yeah. it was uh, yeah, it, it meant a lot. And then. We again, we took another break from Disney and went back in like 2003. And I think that was for my sister's high school graduation. And that's where we, we went there. And uh, it just, you know, those memories started coming back up again of when you went as a kid the last time we had been. And it just it we got hooked on it again. Uh, my sister ended up doing the college program. And so, uh -huh. you know, it's I think we went back in like 2005 when I graduated. And then once my sister was in the college program, it was going down to visit her often over and over again. And that's when that's when the counting just stopped because, you know, it's she was down here with her friends, but by herself. And so we'd come visit and then she got an internship, the one of the PIs. And so then it was even more visits and. I didn't even have the college program on my radar. Like I wasn't, I wasn't going to do it all. I wasn't interested. I still love Disney. And while I was in college, I, I would listen to podcasts because that's, you know, around, I, I started college in 2005 and then 2006 is when a whole bunch of podcasts really started getting up and getting big and including the one that I work for now. And I would listen to WDW radio. Like I, I did it all. And that's what I would, I would do when I was studying. I, I couldn't watch movies because I would just start watching the movies, but with podcasts, I could, I could listen to them in the background. And so then after I finished school, I was like, okay, I'm going to apply for the college program in my last semester. So then I finished school and then I can go straight down into Disney and the hope was I'd get the summer advantage. So I would leave school, stay all summer in Walt Disney World and all through the fall or fall advantage, I guess it would be. And then, you know, see where it goes from there. And I didn't get in. <laughs> and uh -huh. that, it. yeah, it was, it was a bummer. Uh -huh. I did, I, I did some stupid things during college that probably led to why I didn't get in. Uh, you know, kids, kids make mistakes. But they can yep. grow and learn from them as well, too. So uh, yep. anyone who has uh, kids that aren't so smart with their decisions in high school and college, just know they can they can turn things around <laughs> one day. Uh, I'm I'm living proof of that, I think, to an extent. So I, I'm sure there's still some really crazy things that I do that I probably shouldn't like uh, two dudes on a cruise. But uh, that's. Oh, I live for that. <laughs> a lot of people do. It's a uh, definitely peer pressure that that uh, <laughs> is it, it's definitely peer pressure. But see, and I'm older than you, and I want Daddy and I to have two gals on a cruise. That's, so <laughs> it's probably the balance that we need. <laughs> <laughs> I would love for that one day. It's we we'll we'll get on Pete. We'll make we'll make sure that he makes that happen. He has to. Yeah. Oh, he has to. And oh, just has to. Yeah. And of so one of the things that I didn't know about, though, with the college program is that it's technically just it's open to anyone who is enrolled in college or 
above level classes and above level that'd be master programs i mean technically i guess if you're going for your doctorate you could even get in uh, as long as you're enrolled in a collegiate institution i I'm, i think that's still the rules now but back back in the day that was the rules so i was like okay well i'll go for my masters and and i'll apply for the college program and see if i can get in that way because the the hardest thing was I didn't want to just move to Florida not knowing if I would like it. And that's one of the things yeah. that the college program offers is is a test. And I know there's been some heated discussions recently about the college program and the fact that they don't pay well, the fact that it costs so much money for housing. And it's very easy to walk out of the college program in massive debt because of that. But it offers... It offers you a chance to get Disney on your resume, and it offers you the chance, if you're thinking about Florida, it offers you the chance to move down without that commitment. I mean, yeah, you could say, I'm going to move down for a year, see if I get a job. But one of the things I didn't realize was that you don't, you can't just get a job in Florida for the most part unless you have a Florida address on your uh, on you know on your application. And yeah, I could have probably you know got a P.O. box or something, you know, messed around with it, ways to do that. But I, I, you know, I, I was naive up in Pennsylvania saying in Ohio saying, OK, well, I can just apply for jobs in Florida up here and someone will someone will cover me and they don't, you know, discussions about relocation and stuff. That's not a thing. No, one, I'll pay to go down on my own, but they'll give me a chance. And no, that was that was not happening at all. So. Yeah. I didn't just want to go all in and move to Florida and then be like, I don't like this. And I just made a terrible decision. I know when you're young, that's the time to make terrible decisions. But it, I, that was one too far. So the college program allowed me an opportunity to come down and see if I wanted to make Florida and theme parks a thing. And I did. And uh, even though my college program ended for me shortly, uh, I still I still had the bug and I'm not going into that full story. I've told it before. Uh, the Cliff's Notes version is that Disney, you work for Disney on the college program back back then when you would stay in either Chatham Patterson or Vista Way. You worked for Disney, but the housing was done through a separate company uh, that, you know, Disney Disney had an arrangement with. So anything you did work, work related at Disney, you know, that would reflect on what Disney had control over. But then with the housing, that came down to the complexes that housed you. So their roles were like no guests after midnight and obviously smart things like uh, no one underage around alcohol in your apartment and no one from another apartment in your apartment after a certain time. And, you know, stuff that when you're in college, you know, you're you're an adult that makes sense a little bit, but by the time you're out of college and and <laughs> have a lot more experience, it seems weird to live in such an environment that places such heavy rules on you. But that was another time where I knew the rules and I broke them by sneaking in a person from a different complex after hours. <laughs> and I was even though I did not miss a single day of work at Disney and I was always on time, I was I was about ready to get tower trained at test track and that's basically their control booth operator. And so like that's, I was, I was on that path and I was like, I'm going to be able to easily stay at Disney after my program's over. And then I made a housing mistake and that led me to no longer be employed by Disney. I left and came back and when I came back, I started applying for third-party jobs all around Walt Disney World because I knew Disney wasn't going to rehire me because of the college program thing. I think now I probably could if there was ever the right position for me, but there's not, and I'm happy. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, I was like, okay, well, I'll apply for like restaurants and other companies around the area and led me to applying for Universal as well, too. And... Yeah, that's when I started with Universal, and that then lasted for five years through me working at Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, Dragon Challenge, and uh, it gave me a wife and beyond. The uh -huh. Universal didn't give me the wife. I should say that. I, I, I think I earned that on my own. I don't know. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think I just really messed up with my words there. But yeah, and that's <laughs> that's where I'm going to pause on my story. And Jackie, you mentioned that, it, well, you didn't mention JL, but I'm just going to say JL is the one who brought you in with yes. it. But that's that's what started you onto your path of being here at the Diz. What do you actually do? What yes. did you do? And what do you do? Well, so... <laughs> So when I was when Fe when Pete first hired me, he wanted me to come in and work with the moderators on the disboards on disboards.com, the online discussion forum that we have that has topics on any Disney subject you can even imagine and more. <laughs> so so I came in and I, um, I introduced myself, you know, and we found, um, I, I kind of followed people on the boards and got to know their personalities a little bit and, um, kind of narrowed down a list of some moderators to bring on to help us with moderating these forums because they're huge and there's a lot of discussion and, you know, we have to kind of keep people, in line otherwise it gets out of control so you know i started looking for um just that right person and found quite a few of them um tried to make some changes um you know and the thing is is this boards had been around for i think when i first started it had been around for 15 years already at that point yeah. 15 yeah. 17 years so you know a lot of people are set in their ways and with the way things run and how things go. And so it was a little bit of a, it was a little bit of a Dance. tough spot to be in. Yeah. So we had a fam, which is a familiarization event where a lot of travel agents from dreams, unlimited travel came in and a lot of us from the Diz got to go. Um, it was part on land, part on on sea. So there was a three night cruise in there. And it just so happened that my dinner buddy at my table was Corey, Corey Martin. And we got to know each other pretty well on that trip. We talked a lot about stuff and um, he, you know, I told him about, you know, what I had done before coming to the Diz, kind of like we are now. And he had this idea, which I had no idea was going on because his little wheels get going, you know, and then you don't really know what's happening. And so all of a sudden, a couple, maybe a month or so, two months after that cruise, he invited me to come over to the content side of the Diz. And so I was so thrilled beyond anything to come over to the content side of things. And so that's because I love to stock what's going on at Disney. So I, I love to, to see what's happening. I love to, um, I, for those of you who don't know, I was part of the, I was invited to be a panelist on the Disney parks moms panel, um, that is now called plan Disney. Um, and originally, it was, so this is kind of funny, but my first year it was still called the Walt Disney World Moms Panel. And then it turned into the Disney Parks Moms Panel for my second year. And then um, just a couple years ago, it turned into Plan Disney. And so it's had a couple of little identity things going on. But I met an awful lot of people and and was online kind of a lot in a lot of groups and on official Disney website and whatnot. So I loved to write about things and I love to share things and I stopped everything Disney. And so that's kind of what I continued to do when I brought, was brought over, except it was a little different style because I like to share Disney news in a floofy, magical pixie dusted sort of way, rather than a here's the news yeah. <laughs> kind of way. <laughs> so, so there's that, yeah. but, but yeah, so that's kind of what I do. So, so now I, I do that and I do, gosh, I do so many things. How do I tell everybody what I do? <laughs> do you want to think about it for a second? 
you can think. I can. Yeah, I'll uh, so I'll I'll jump back in on my side while you think about it. And for me, I, I guess I really didn't share how I got into the Diz, so I'll keep it very brief. I essentially was uh, sent a a a text message from my sister where she said, "Hey, you know, Pete from the Diz is." just posted on Facebook that he's looking for a video person, video audio person uh, for a job, and you should probably try it out. And this was after a couple of years at Universal. And I was like, oh, I'm moving up the company there and I'm happy with it. But I got a college degree to uh, to be in communications and video production. So I probably should eventually try to make that degree work in a professional setting. And so I randomly emailed him expecting to hear nothing back, and I did. And that led to a meeting with him and Dustin about uh, coming on board to help out with video production as the the Diz was about to, the Diz Unplugged specifically was about to take the podcast into a video podcast format, and they would need extra help with video and then the audio production side of things. And you know, I I couldn't obviously turn that down when I found out more about why they wanted a person. And then the funny part is I now hear from Pete every so often. Uh, if you haven't watched me long enough to know, I have a very uh, monotone voice and monotonous voice. And uh, I also... I, I also have a very flat affect uh, for a lot of the times. And uh, Pete shares openly that he had no read on me and he would uh, he was considering passing on me. But Dustin, Dustin pulled hard to make sure that I was brought on because of, of the potential I had. And so it ultimately worked out and I, I left Universal. And I started out as an associate producer in 2013, uh, helping with the podcast. And really, I shot park benches like nonstop and POVs and ride throughs and going to the events. And like I was I was just constantly in the parks, probably about uh, back then. We only recorded the podcast on Tuesday. That was the only podcast that we had that was before. Universal, Dreams Unlimited Travel Show, before the trip one day that we got into, and now DVC fan, DCL fan, moving to Orlando is before all all of that, and this show as well, too. So we only had one day a week that we would, we'd record for a couple hours, and then the rest of the week, we just literally went to the parks nonstop and made content, and that's all I did 24-7, and things have obviously changed since then in 2016. Uh, when Dustin moved on, I became the producer of the Diz Unplugged and, and video content and just have been plugging away on that since. And I'll share more about what I do day to day here after Jackie tells us what she does day to day now. She thought of things. Yes. Yes. <laughs> just only a couple. No, only a couple. <laughs> You know, because, you know, so it's funny because when I was sort of in limbo before the Diz, I started my own blog because they had, you know, all these free little websites where you could, you know, start your own website yeah. and and blog about things. And so one day I just decided I woke up one morning and I decided I was going to do that. So I, so I did. And I used to write about whatever. And um, there was this this event that Disney um, hosted called Disney Social Media Mom Celebration. And somebody there noticed my blog and invited me to this event. It was this invitation only thing went on for a few years. And I, I got invited for um, three or four years in a row and it was really cool. So I knew some stuff about websites. And so um, when Corey brought me over to the content side of things, I, I knew how to do web or uh, WordPress. So, because I had converted my site over to a WordPress site. So I was pretty familiar with WordPress mm -hmm. And um, I would notice certain things, you know, about the Diz and I would ask questions and um, and then he got me started on kind of helping out with the back end of the site as well. So not only would I sort of watch the Disney news and, and put a story up about it, um, I did an editorial or two here and there to kind of thrown in. Um, but then I would start, you know, the, the WDWinfo.com site is absolutely huge. I know we always refer to it as the Diz, 
But um, at first, when I was first hired, I was confused because it was because everybody called it the Diz, but then it was www.info.com. So I was like, is that the same thing or is there another website called the Diz.com? <laughs> like, I didn't know legitimately. <laughs> so kind of funny little tidbit, but it it was really cool because then I started discovering how big the site was and how, you know, there were different sections of our website for each of the theme parks and then went down even to each of the lands inside of the theme parks and the attractions. And, and so I would see things on the site that needed fixed or updated. And so, so Corey started working with me on showing me how to do those back end things, which once I know how to do things, if I see something that needs fixing, I just fix it. Yeah. So I can lose a whole day just just fixing <laughs> stuff, doing this, doing that, tweak this, tweak that. Oh, that needs to be bold. You know, oh, that looks funny. Let me just mess with that a little bit. And um, and so, you know, and, and of course, now we have all this social media that we do. So yeah. we're on social, too, trying to watch, you know, what's going on at Disney. Um, you know, I'm up here in Jacksonville. So when something's going on at the parks, I can't just hop in my car and zip on over there because it's a two and a half hour drive each way. So um, as much as I, as much as that, I feel like that sometimes puts a damper on what I can do. It also doesn't in the same respect because I don't visit often like you guys do down there. So it feels vacation-y to me still when I come down for the weekend, yeah. which is kind of cool. So, you know. Oh, yeah. And that's, uh, you know, I, I feel like I've seen it a couple of the past weeks on the Off the Rails shows and other things that we've done where uh, every now and then the narrative comes up that like, that specifically Rhino and I that were very pessimistic and we lose that Disney side. Uh, it's It's a little bit, difficult and challenging sometimes with the job that we do have because we are living eating and breathing disney 24 7 specifically jackie and i which is kind of good why we're pairing this one together not not that the rest of the team doesn't but uh i mean it's jackie and i are texting off the clock on the clock all the time and we're both constantly watching everything when we have any free amount of time and it's i we we struggle to definitely shut that side off which does make it very weird to uh, also you know have a family <laughs> and uh, be normal and be out with friends like they, when i do get the chance to go out with my friends uh they they know what i do and they follow roughly along with it but uh, almost every single time I get to meet up with them, it inevitably I get asked like, "Did a did you get run over by a train or something today? Did you get run over by a truck? What in the world happened?" I'm like, "Just, I just worked. It was a long day, <laughs> and <laughs> yep. yeah, it's just. But we're we're in it. We're in it twenty four seven. And so sometimes when we do these shows, like this is I I am." Technically, I am the only one that my job is fully to produce these shows because we get that question all the time, too. It's like, well, what 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 does all the team do? Jackie just shared a lot of what she does. Um, and I'm not going to speak for the others, but basically my job is I am the primary person who is overseeing all of the different shows and the audio, video, everything with it, and then the overall direction of the YouTube channel, plus everything on our universal site with uofan.com now and that launch. So I am just like, I am constantly watching over all of this and trying to find the right directions to go in. And then also balancing that out with going in the park and so I'm still I'm doing all of that in like Tuesdays, our big day for podcast recordings. But it it literally changes something like off the rails here. It's we fit that in when we have time. So uh, like it, it's just you, we never know when this is going to pop up. And a lot of us have flexibility that we can jump in a show, but we're doing other things like I I'm I'm usually in a park 
trying to be in a park three days a week now, which, you know, before before park reservations, I was I was in a park at least four to five days a week and on top of everything else I did. And now now it's down to two for sure and hopefully three. But I'm then also running around trying to get as much content, trying to film dining reviews, trying to film uh, vlogs. And even though we're not really posting overviews and such like that right now, we're kind of getting back to it. I'm also uh, still you know, I'm going on rides, uh, watching on wait times to see how accurate it is. So I know when I report back on these shows, uh, what, what that's like, and then filming POV. So that way we have them in our library if we do need them for anything else down the road. So it's like, it's just this big, big dance of always, am I sitting behind my computer editing shows and, and making sure everything's on the right path? Or am I in a theme park actually actually doing this? And then the part I hate most is honestly the post, post-production. It's a lot of fun making those videos come to life. And, you know, it's very easy when it's like a ride through because it's usually just in, out, and you're done. But with some of the shows, you know, it obviously takes a lot longer with some of the overviews and more creative videos. It takes a while and in the vlogs and it's always it's fun trying to trying to do new things to to make the vlogs more interesting. And it doesn't always work out. And a lot of times for me, it doesn't work out. But I still I'm still trying <laughs> to, to just make interesting content, but it's just it's nonstop. So that was the long tangent way of me saying sometimes we do get on these shows and I'm not happy and and as cheerful as I want to be. And it's not I promise you it's a lot of it is my flat affect and just my voice in general and the fact that I don't know how to emote well, but uh, some of my most cherished moments are when I'm just going into Disney parks and I don't have to pick up a camera and I can just walk around and enjoy it. And it's, it's very rare that I get to do that now. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe an hour a week where I can just be like, okay, I'm turning off everything else and I'm getting to experience this like, like a normal person. And it's those those are one of the re like those moments are one of the reasons that I'm able to, you know, actually, actually decompress a lot of the times. And obviously the people who are watching and listening that constantly are writing awesome feedback and so supportive that also keeps the energy going. But sometimes those moments where it's not a job and it's just, it's just relaxing and enjoying the parks. Like there was this one night, jo- uh, Jackie and I went and we reviewed Be Our Guest years ago when they changed up the style of the menu and the way it was done. And we recorded a video and we were nonstop in the moment. But then, you know, it's as we're leaving the park on the way out, uh, we we didn't walk together intentionally, but uh, <laughs> we just kept, we kept meeting up. But it was like in one of those moments that like just taking in that walk from from the back of the park to the front of the park and exiting where you're just like okay I don't have to do anything right now I can just enjoy the moment it's it's those those opportunities that like it's I I I love I love what we do and I just I wish it yeah. could be that all the time 24/7 and I am envious of the people who do just get to enjoy the parks like that. But at the same time too, we literally get to live Disney 24 seven and maybe we're weird adults for loving that. But honestly, I, I see so many people that, you know, I know went to school for the same thing I did and they're stuck in a life of filming weddings all summer long. And, you know, in doing other shoots in places that aren't necessarily exciting. You know, not everyone who goes to school for video production can actually make movies and get that opportunity and and really do those things that you kind of get into it for a lot of times. And but there was a door open to do something like this. And I have I have the utmost respect for anyone out there who's vlogging uh, doing uh, channels like the Diz was with uh, you know updates and and POVs and, and videos like that because uh, a lot of times you can you can do those kind of jobs without having 
a second you you can do them with a second job but to go like fully crazy into it a lot of times you need to make it your career and that's a big that's a big risk and I'm fortunate enough that Pete set up this empire that I can do a lot of this very risk free and have the mm-hmm. failure to make mistakes and you know not every show works out not every vlog works out and I still have a job and uh it's I, I guess I'm trying to say like I'm very fortunate for for the position that we're in and it might not always seem like we're having fun. It might seem like we're uh, just kind of grumpy and ornery from time to time, but it's just, you know, it's just this weird, weird balance that I'm constantly dealing with and I wouldn't trade it for the world at the same time. I love, I love what I do. And I just wish, I wish, I wish I knew the way to share with other people how much I love it too. I guess I kind of do like when I'm filming my fireworks videos and stuff where I'm like, this is my chance to shine and try to showcase it in the best way possible. And I guess sometimes that's my love letter to people saying, I am happy. Look at, <laughs> look at, look yeah. at how much I care about this. I probably should do that on the stuff where I'm showing my face and talking more often, but uh, yeah. I just, I'll get a tattoo smile on my there face. I'm like, just, I'm happy. <laughs> You do a great job and it does come through. It does come through because you, you get, you, you see, well, I see the compliments that people give you in the YouTube comments. And that's the thing when you love what you do, it's, it shows in your work. And you reminded me of something too, when you said how Pete's got this empire. So, so after being on the content team for a couple of years, Pete actually promoted me to the senior editor. And so I, I couldn't believe, so titles to me are cool, but I don't need a title to work my butt off, Mm -hmm. especially when I'm doing something that I love. So I have a really high work ethic. I always have. And so to have that, I was so honored and I was even sort of like, oh my gosh, the Diz is this huge thing and I'm in charge of all the content. Oh my goodness. How am I even going to do this? How, how can I have this responsibility? How can I, how am I going to make this happen? So it's, it's so funny because at any given moment, any time of the day, you will see approximately 30 tabs open in my Google Chrome Mm -hmm. because that's what I do. I have certain, I even have it set that there's certain ones that open when I open Chrome because there's 17 of those because those are the minimum ones that I need to do my job. So like, and so I, because, so I'm always thinking, so I'm watching news And I'm thinking about what kind of an article could I write that will get people excited about this, that, or the other. And, and then I know also our video guys are working so hard on getting this content from the parks. We need that. We need to share that with our readers and our viewers. And so I have notifications on all of our, our YouTube channels, each one of them. So anytime a video goes up, I know about it that instant. So I get it up on Twitter. I put it up on our homepage to show in our updates that all of you lovely subscribers get in your email every day. And so it just, there's like so many things to make everything go round. And I think a lot of times people see us and they think that we're just sort of playing in the theme parks and they sometimes don't realize how much work goes on behind the scenes to bring all of the moving parts cohesively together so that it presents in a way that our viewers and readers and listeners will consume and enjoy. And I think that it takes, Um, well, it not only takes a lot of work, but it takes a good bit of thought on how to do these things. And 
we are always looking for constructive criticism from people. Yeah. Like we always have things to learn. We are, we know we're yeah. not perfect. And I, oh. and I always welcome any constructive feedback in terms of how we can make this better, how we can make it better for everyone out there and more interesting. Even if that means less Craig and, and more Jackie, I'm willing to make that happen. Oh. Or less Jackie even. <laughs> no, 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 Jackie, you okay. are it's I'm I'm glad you kept going with with what you do and what you're constantly doing because you are amazing at it. And I oh, and yeah. one of the blessings of the pandemic is that we did we did start to migrate to this uh, remote work style where we're bringing in guests from and our, our team, I shouldn't even say guests, our team, but bringing them in from uh, their own homes. And like Jackie would come down to the studio usually once a month, give or take roughly, uh, yeah. maybe sometimes twice a month. And mm -hmm. you would help us out with stuff. But even then, uh, sometimes it was longer in between. And if it wasn't for the pandemic forcing us to reassess these things, uh, you wouldn't have been able to even have the presence that you've been able to have over the past months. And now, you know, it's just, yeah. it's been amazing to be able to finally get your voice out there more because I'm sure people have read your voice for years now, but uh, now it's just on a completely different level. And that makes me happy because you oh. are really amazing. And Oh, you're sweet. And Thank yeah, you. Even, even when we don't always have the words to say or have nothing to say. And it just goes into random tangents. It's still fun. Yeah. I think it's fun too. It's so it's like, that's such an important part of, of being a team, mm -hmm. you know, like it just, it, you just, when you know that somebody's feeling the same thing or that you have an ear on the other end that you can say, da, 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 da. This is what's going on. And because we all think differently and we all see things differently. And so it's just so cool to to that we've been able to this past year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew it was going to be this long, right? But it's so cool because we can we've come together and we've really been able to figure out what people do and what people are good at and kind of make those things just all work and work with the site too. Of course, we have the same ultimate goal in mind, yeah. right? Yep. You know, so exactly. that makes it fun too. Yeah. So I, I think that's a good overview of what we do, how we got to do what we do and where it all stemmed from. And with that, I'm going to bring this conversation back on the rails. I know it's not Rhino's whistle, but I feel like, you know, with the intro, I, I dubbed him in there. But with, with this mm -hmm. part, I feel weird if there's not a live whistle. So I'm just going to. OK, we're back on the rails. And. Mm -hmm. So that's it for this time around. Like I said, we'll explore other team members as we move into the future here. And I'm sure Jackie and I have forgotten about a lot. It's a conversation that definitely can be had again. And uh, for anyone who wants to still know more, of course, you can always find all the ways to reach out to us on social, in the YouTube comments, uh, email even if you really want to. There's there's ways to get in touch with us and and talk more if we missed anything. But yeah, we always, as we said, Leave us that feedback, whether it's in the YouTube comments or by reaching out to us. We we want to know more about what you think and, and have that conversation. But uh, one last time, if you want to book a vacation and support us through Dreams Unlimited Travel, that would be amazing. You can get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Also, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and hit a thumbs up on this video. Please make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening to Off the Rails, as well as leaving us those five-star ratings and reviews. Jackie, thank you so much for the fun, engaging conversation for the past hour. That definitely. It was so fun. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and thanks everyone out there for listening and watching. Really appreciate you. And I hope everyone has a great week. Take care. Bye bye.